I've uh, finished the sample shirt, so I'm going to get some fabric now. Classic white cotton, you know, nothing fancy. I didn't want to support my local retailers, so let me check their selection. Doo -doo -doo. Huh. I see they have a, a Facebook page. All right, well, there's bound to be some other store in Toronto that sells their fabrics online. Look at the length of this list. Here we go, here we go. And shirting fabrics, yes, please. Okay. Okay, plant. And we have seven different <laughs> ghastly fabrics. Whew, all right, all right, this other store, what do you have to offer? Okay. <laughs> More prints. Okay, I'm going to one of the big box stores. They're bound to have invested in their online retail. Okay, okay, all right, nicely organized. Oh, a light gray solid block is the picture. I mean, I know exactly what I'm buying and at $17.50 a yard, allow me to just to add that to cart and buy it now. Oh, fuego. <laughs> Look, not saving the world here. I'm you know what, why don't you keep searching? I believe in you, you'll find us something great and then in the meantime, I can make us a second sample shirt. So I hadn't planned on doing this second week of sample shirt making, but you know, lemons to lemonade, make hay while the sun is up. I don't know if that second one applies. Moral of the story, um, I'm getting a little funky here, I'm gonna try out a few things. And the key to remember here is that I'm doing the design with the placket that goes about halfway and then a seam across. So last week, not only did I add three eighths of an inch at the top here, I just want to make this shirt a little bit bigger in general. So I'm going to add another quarter on top of that. I'm only doing the top bit first, which means I can do this basically like a button up. And then the second half of uh, the front of the shirt, this bottom piece, I want to change up how I do things in the back as well. I want to make the pleat run all the way to the top. It's time to start putting this thing together. So basically, this technique that I'm doing means that my front plackets are completely seamless in the front. Fold this over. One more fold. No seam. Aw, yeah. And now these two top panel pieces here can be attached to that whole piece of the bottom. With this new back pleat that I'm trying, I'm gonna first sew in my line. I'm gonna go straight down for about four inches. Press this thing into place. So first, just get that nice and smooth. I need to flatten that out, like so. Dun, 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 dun. That's actually kind of cool, I like the way that looks. I found that the band on the other shirt was much too tall, so I'm going to slim it down considerably on this version. What did I say? I want the final thing to be about 7 eighths. So that's to here. And then 
a good trick I've learned is to give myself a little bit extra at the bottom of the collar that attaches to the shirt. Gives for wiggle room, you know? It's been a while since I've worn this turtleneck, but uh, I'm liking it again. I think the key is rolling up the sleeves with it because I'm not a big fan of the bands at the bottom or the band that I put at the bottom, but this, you know? Styling, styling is everything. Now stitch this collar down onto the shirt. And then finally some finishing touches with this collar. Uh, I didn't originally cut out any uh, sleeves because I ended up making the armholes a little bit bigger and I wanted to measure what the final size was. So let me add that now. Make sure everything's sitting nice and flat, okay. Hmm, <laughs> got a little worked up there earlier. Let me, let me try again. I mean, there's bound to be some sort of a, a blog that has a detailed list of online fabric stores. Okay, Corduroy Chronicles. Nice, that is a good list. Needle and thread, let's try, ooh. Such a modern website. I mean, look at that logo. The ampersand is bound to indicate that they know what's up. Pretty pictures of linens, but so many. Linens, linens, linens. I might as well go join the commune. Ah, some obscure Japanese brand uh, doing an artisanal weave on their old timey loom. Hmm. I mean, it's only $50,000 for this. Strange, unique weave. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, just a basic white fabric. Am I asking for too much? Oh, okay, this is... This is not about the fabric anymore. What's it really about, am I right? <laughs> Look, uh, let me finish up here. I'm almost done. If you haven't found anything, I can help you. The last thing I'm changing is the way I do the curve at the bottom here. Curve and then curve. This is going to be the challenge, making sure I get the folds under nicely. All right, and all done. Uh, well, except for buttonholes and buttons. and I've shown that enough times. This week isn't about making the shirt, so let's skip ahead, editing corn. I think it was worth it remaking this shirt with muslin one more time because well, first off, look at the overall fit of this thing. I'm really happy with how it is. It's, it's more comfortable, but it's also still tailored. The collar here, I, while I was sewing, I realized that I'd made it too big, but what I'm happy about is that I got the height of it just right. Really pleased with that. Uh, moving on to the placket in the front here with this extra seam and then the way the placket comes up out of it is nice and minimalist but at the same time just add some dimension to the front of the shirt which is what I was hoping for uh, and now uh, what I consider my piece de resistance is this single seam running down the back here that goes into the placket 
It helps modernize that old fashioned yolk, but still gives me all the benefits that I need for when I do this. And then finally, this new curve, uh, I think is just, it's a better shape. I'm so sorry. I realize I've become the very thing I don't like. A complainer who does nothing about it. You know what? This is an opportunity. I have all the skill sets. Let me open up my own online store that sells nothing but the basics. Do some nice up close shots to really show the texture of this fabric. I mean, I'm doing it on my phone. Oh, and then uh, when you hover the mouse over top of the image, we show you a little video of crimping the fabric so you can kind of see how pliable it is. So definitely basic cotton, but then maybe a nice cotton poplin. Nice white linen would be nice. Uh, definitely some jerseys, but then also rivnets and ooh, where am I gonna store all those bolts of fabric and oh, right, envelopes? I got a mail and all that. Well, what good are these if I don't sell them? I got a market and me. <laughs> Maybe not so easy after all. Oh, huh. <laughs> uh.